Stefan and Anna Christensen pastor Jesus Church and lead a Bible school in Oslo, Norway. They love to equip young people in local churches to reach their cities with the gospel. This summer, they led a team of young people to over 50 nations across Europe. Today, we hear about how they are trying to start a Jesus revolution. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast with Dr. Daniel King, where Daniel interviews full-time evangelists, pastors, missionaries, and normal everyday Christians to discover how they share their faith, their powerful testimonies, and amazing stories that will inspire you to reach people with the good news. And now, here's your host, missionary and evangelist, Daniel King. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited to tell people about Jesus. Today, I have two very special guests with me, Stephen and, and Anna Christensen from Norway. Thank you for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. And Stefan, by the way, is how I would say my name in Europe. Okay. Well, right now you're in America. So, but Still Stefan, Stefan, yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for, for being with us today. Now, you have been taking young people on mission trips across the continent of Europe. And this summer, you did something very exciting. You took a group of young people to every nation in Europe. Tell me, what did God do? Wow, that was amazing what we saw in in Europe. It actually was all of spring and summer, going into summer, and we visited 48 nations. We still have two nations that we're going to do this fall because that's the Faroe Islands and, and Iceland. Uh, but other other than that, we went to every yes. single nation together with a team of 60 young people. What a privilege. I mean, Stefan, you were there almost in every... I did the whole tour. I think you did I, the whole tour. I felt I had to be a part of the whole thing. And uh, through the years, we've been working a lot in Europe. We've been in about 1,100 cities uh, since 1997 and doing evangelistic outreaches all over the place. We've, we've sent out about 10,000 young people on short-term missions in Europe through the years as well. But then this dream came to us after the pandemic like how can we see a whole continent impacted at once? How can we see a harvest of souls across a whole continent and a whole gen generation of young people on fire for Jesus? So the 60 of us went in, in nine vans, equipment, light, band, uh, you know, preachers, uh, everything. And it was probably by, by far, I think, the uh, the greatest endeavor, if you think about logistics and all the practical matters and and uh, 40 na 48 nations is a lot. So we typically did um, one major event in, in some of the smaller nations, in some of the bigger nations. We might have done two or three cities uh, or, or four or five, like in the UK, one of the largest, large nations. And it was so encouraging. It was like really, you know, sparking the flame of, of your youth revival on the whole continent. And we were so blessed to see what the Lord was doing. And so tell me, what is the spiritual atmosphere like in Europe right now? A lot of people are saying that Europe is a post-Christian area. But I like to say that Europe is pre-Christian. It is ready to come to Jesus very quickly. Oh, you are so right. It is ready. So it's exactly that, you know, that Europe does, does not understand religion in connection with Jesus. Jesus is, you know, religion is not interesting for, for the Europeans. So it's a great time to show that Jesus is not religion. It's completely different. It's relationship. So that's the message that Europe really needs everywhere. Some, some nations, we see that there are so many believers and they go to traditional churches, but they do not have a personal relationship with God and they do not even know that God wants that. So, I mean, Europe is such a wonderful mission field 
So when we go, we go in the streets, we are in the schools, we are on the screens, of course. Uh, but we really see that people are like, wow, I can have this personal relationship with God. You mean that Jesus came for that? Because religion, we think in 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 yeah, many parts of the world that we have to climb up to God and become good enough for him to accept us. And, and uh, something like that has been uh, the understanding in Europe, I think, for, for decades, ages, for generations. So the message that we come with, that Jesus is alive and well, and Jesus is ready, Jesus came down to become like us, that is a message that goes all across Europe and that is received everywhere. And we see the Holy Spirit lift up Jesus, drawing people to the cross and people having a new start, a new understanding, really, hmm. of who Jesus is and what it means for them. And so the name of your ministry is Jesus yes. Revolution. Exactly. And a revolution is a radical change in society. Yeah. What does a Jesus Revolution look like? Well, if anything has ever been a revolution, it's what happens when you are born again. When when you, your sins are forgiven, you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You go from darkness to light. You go from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. Uh, you become a part of his church. I mean, if anything was a revolution, that's a revolution. So the interesting thing was that when we were seeking God for the name of this ministry back in 1997, we were too young to ever have heard about, you know, the Jesus Revolution in California back in the days, and we were just seeking God. And yeah, now it's a popular movie, and which I know. which I actually watched recently, and it made me cry because people were yeah. being baptized. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how revolutionary the gospel is. Yeah, yes. yes, it is, and and here's the thing. I mean, the gospel works everywhere, and so even though gospel, the, the Europe has got a quite we're in a rough spiritual climate compared with other parts of the world, but the gospel always works. So that's why we need to preach it. We need to make it accessible to the young generation. And the special thing with Europe, I suppose, is that most young people have never really heard it, really. So when they hear it preached in a way they can understand with power, with conviction and, and through the presence of the Holy Spirit, so many young people are opening up their hearts. So we believe that it's mm -hmm. time to re-evangelize Europe. Of course, many, many nations of Europe, there's 2.3% evangelical believers throughout Europe, 11, 12 nations, even less than 0.1% evangelical believers. So, so um, it is a continent that needs a move of the Holy Spirit. Many nations have never really seen, uh, not just a revival, many nations have never even seen a reformation of any kind. So, so we need we need to sort of bring on a gospel army all across Europe and the world, really. And we believe that together with believers like yourself, an evangelist all across the world, it's time to really bring in the harvest of souls all across the world. And Europe is no exception. Amen. Now, you are from the nation of Norway. Yes. And the most famous evangelist from Norway is Ariel Edverson. Did I say that right? Exactly. And uh, he was a great evangelist from a very small village in Norway, but had a powerful ministry that impacted nations all over the world. And uh, recently I was there and I was looking in their magazine. I saw a picture of a very young Anna and Stefan that were there ministering. And, and so uh, you grew up in some sense under his ministry. What are some of the the lessons that you learned from him? Oh, that that's many. That's a lot. Come yeah. on, Stefan. I mean, you traveled with him for how ten, many years? Ten years, approximately. Yeah, and we've been so so close to him. We're so thankful. We've learned so many things. First of all. You never start a meeting with a lie. You always have to be on time in everything you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think. What I think. First and foremost, there's so many things that you can extract from his life, but the number one thing is probably how coming from a small place, a small nation or a small village is not a hindrance for a big vision. The Lord called him to be a world evangelist. He comes from a town of three, or, or a village of 3,000 people. In that village, he built a center that could seat 4,000 people. He had 24-7 uh, television satellite preaching the gospel in Arabic to the Arabic-speaking world. He had crusades all across the world. 
he supported, I think, about 20,000 or maybe more indigenous evangelists and church planters that he paid for. And he had five, six million um, uh, students on his correspondence course. So those who got saved, he wanted them to do a 16-week course. So he had offices around the world. And, you know, this was the old days. So you would typically have a lesson, you know, write assignments, send into the office, get, get a reply back. And the five, six million students fulfilling that. And so he, he wasn't just content with, you know, response. He wanted to make sure they were disciples. And all these people who were also saved, they had radio programs in, in, in 180 nations around the world. And all of this happening from a microscopic village, seven hours drive from the capital of Norway, really shows if God is calling you, if God has given you a vision, your nation, your, your geography, the, the size of your, your, your area is no hindrance. God can do exceedingly above, abundantly above anything that we ask or think according to the, His power that is at work in us. And His life is just a great example about that, really. Now, you have a, a church in Oslo and also a Bible school, and you bring young people on these mission trips to Europe and to other parts of the world. And, and so when I was hearing about your mission trip this year, my, my son, Caleb, is in eighth grade. He's 13 years old. I was thinking, oh, that would be so wonderful to send him on an adventure like this. So if someone is listening and they want to get connected with you, maybe they want to come to the Bible school, maybe they want to send send their young people on a one of these great mission trips with you. What is your website? How can they find out more information about the Jesus Revolution? Well, they can just go to jesusrevolution.com. Yeah. And they can join in the summer. We're going to Prague in 2024 and young people are usually coming from 25 30 nations and also increasingly young people from over here from the US are joining in. And this is in the end of July in 2024. And then if they want to do a year for God, uh, they can do it through our training center in Oslo. They can do it from Rome. They can do it from Sofia in Bulgaria. They can do it from Belgium. They can do it um, from, sorry. Did you say Rome? Rome, Italy. Yeah, yeah or from, from um, the Ukraine. And so there's different opportunities also in plugging in if people would like to set aside a year and evangelize in Europe. Mm. What a tremendous opportunity. All right, last word. What do you feel that Jesus is saying to the church during this time? When people follow me, that's the most important thing that we can ever do. And that's the most challenging word as well. Follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. I think we're coming back to discipleship, really. It's, it's like, you know, the, the, the word that in Antioch, it was the first time that the disciples were called Christians. And why? Because they reminded people about Christ. And now we call ourselves Christians, and it's time for us to come back to being disciples. And Jesus actually promised us that if I focus on the following, he is going to do the making in me of becoming a fisher of men. This means stepping out of my comfort zone and really starting to come into the love of God for people, for others that will make me, uh, you know, being so interested in others, being willing to listen, being willing to, to take part of people's lives in our neighborhoods, schools, universities, streets, wherever in the workplace. So I think that's a word for the church all over the world. It's about everyone, isn't it? And it's about reaching everyone. And it can only be done when everyone gets involved in reaching everyone. <laughs> Yeah. You sound like a true evangelist. <laughs> and you know, thinking about the need yeah. for the gospel to be preached all across the world and how God needs ordinary Christians and believers of all kinds and evangelists and churches to just re-engage with the, with the Great Commission. Mm. Anna, you were saved mm. because an American evangelist, T.L. Osborne, yeah, come came to preach the gospel in our city, Oslo, yeah. and you were a 22-year-old girl, and that's, you know, I the mean, beginning of a I, revolution. I, there, there were posters all over my city, Oslo, talking about this campaign, these meetings with T.L. Osborne. I had never heard of him. And I got so provoked, actually, because I was invited by 
people everywhere, come to this crusade, you know, campaign. I went there to find more reasons why I would never, ever become a hallelujah Christian. And one guy Christian. actually said, you don't dare to come, do yeah, you? That's, that's the thing. <laughs> that he was so smart. He said, oh, you're not coming. Oh, so you don't dare to go? And I was like, come on, no one is going to ever have that on me that I didn't dare to go. So I went there and I never planned to stay. I was just going to be able to say, you know, check that. I went there. No one can say I didn't dare. But I stood there and I listened to the gospel message preached by T.L. Osborne. And it was so special. You know, he, I was, when he was calling people forward to receive Jesus, I was running forward, receiving Jesus as Lord of my life. And he was pointing at me and he was saying, you are a Jesus woman now. I was like, what? I'm a Jesus woman now. What am I going to do? What does a Jesus woman do? How, how does she live? What is she doing? I went and bought myself a huge, big Bible. I thought a Jesus woman must have a big Bible, at least. I was sitting in my home. I was smoking cigarettes. I was blowing the smoke away to see the scripture, you know. And, and, and I felt, and then I felt one day, the Lord spoke to me and said, Anna, can you picture me with a cigarette in my mouth? I was like, no, no, Lord, of course not. You're, you're Jesus. You're the Messiah. Of course, you're the son of God. You don't smoke cigarettes. I understand that. He said, but Anna, I do now because I live in you now. I was like, what? What am I going to do? And he said, turn it over to me and I'll help you. And since that day, I, I never smoked a, a cigarette, you know. And, and I also, I met Theo Osborne many, many years later because Stefan was asked to interpret for him. And he said to me, Anna, write a book. Call it Love Story and I'll write the, the foreword in it. And he did. I wrote the book. I was in prayer writing that book. And he wrote the foreword in it. And it's it's in English. It's in now. English now. For yeah. the first time in, you, you know, it's been in Norwegian, but now it's in English. And my story is there, you know, a story of God's love revolution in somebody's yeah. life. <laughs> Amen. Well, we'll put a link to the book in the description on the podcast. So if you're interested in hearing more about Anna and Stefan Christensen, you can learn more about them. And thank you guys so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there evidence for God's existence? How do we really know Jesus was raised from the dead? Can we trust the Bible? Do miracles happen? Does God care about me as an individual? In Dr. Daniel King's book, Proof God is Real, you'll find the answers to these three vital questions and more. Is God there? Does God care? And do I dare to follow him? In his powerful, easy to read book, Daniel provides seven convincing proofs of God's existence. You'll learn about the evidence of cause, design, logic, morality, scripture, miracles, and religious experience. With Proof God is Real, you'll read about topics like, was Jesus the Son of God or just a crazy preacher? If God does exist, is He interested in your life? If God is there, why do bad things happen to good people? In Proof God is Real, Daniel King shows you God is there and He cares for you. Plus, how to take a leap of faith and start a relationship with a God who deeply loves you. Order Proof God is Real today by calling 1-877-431-4276 or find the book on Amazon. Thanks so much for listening today. I am excited about telling people about Jesus, and I want to invite you to be a part of helping us to rescue people from hell and take them with us to heaven. There's two things you can do to help. First of all, can you go find the Evangelism Podcast on Apple iTunes and leave us a positive review? By giving a review, you will help other people find these valuable resources about sharing our faith. And second, would you become a financial partner with King Ministries? 
Every single dollar that people give us enables us to lead at least one person to Jesus. And so that means for only one dollar, you can help start a party in heaven. And so today I want to invite you to become a monthly partner. You can start out for just a dollar, but if God puts it on your heart to do more, of course you can do more. But please go to kingministries.com and become a monthly partner with us today to help us to lead more people to Jesus. Thank you so much, and God bless you. For more information about how to share your faith or to financially support our worldwide evangelistic outreaches, visit kingministries.com. Again, that's kingministries.com.